So you've just landed a PB, it's a fish of a lifetime. You hand your phone to a passerby, they snap away, you put your fish back, you look at your phone and you've got this. Gutted, eh? This video is gonna solve that problem for you. By the end of this film, hopefully you'll be able to take perfect catch photos on your own and yeah, get pictures of the fish that you've caught that you'll be proud of. Of course, the quality of your images has a lot to do with the camera that you use. First of all, we're gonna start off covering uh, how to use your phone, and later on in this video, we'll talk about using a mirrorless or DSLR camera to achieve higher resolution, better quality images. But starting off with your phone. First of all, you're gonna need some way of setting a timer or a sound activated shutter. What I mean by that is you'll need some sort of trigger to set the camera off to take a photo once you're in position. I believe on the newer iPhones there is a timer mode within the camera. However, what we really like is a free app called Whistle Camera. This is an app which you can just whistle or make a noise and that will set off the timer and then take a photo for you. You can get this from the App Store. If we're using our phone to take pictures, we don't want to bring a big clumsy tripod with us. If we just want to take pictures on our phone, it's probably because we're on a shorter session and trying to pack light. This is where we use a product called the Selfie Fish. It's like an adapter that clips onto your phone, but then allows you to screw that mount into a bank stick. So you can take any normal fishing bank stick, attach it to the Selfie Fish, clip your phone in and stick it in the ground. And that works really well for us. So you've landed a fish, it's best to leave that fish in the net, resting in the water whilst you set up your camera and get everything ready. The angle of your photo kind of depends on where the sun is in the sky. You don't want the sun behind you uh, because your face will probably be quite dark and the fish will be underexposed and your background will be really bright. Uh, so you want to try and get the sun facing towards you. If in doubt, try and ensure you have the sun behind the camera. On a cloudy day, you won't need to worry about this. We like to try and look for an area of pure sun or pure shade rather than a dappled area. We find dappled light tends to make the catch pictures a little bit uh, all over the place and not so clean and crisp. Uh, if in doubt, set up your camera and fire off a couple of practice shots. Uh, just pretend to hold the fish, put your hands up and you'll see very quickly whether or not your lighting and your composure is good. Now it's time to get the fish out of the water, lay it on the mat, unhook it, do whatever you need to do. And then when you're holding it up in front of the camera, just try and line it up within the shot. So you're not, you're not cropping off the tail, you're not cropping off the head, your, uh, the top of your head is also in shot. And then you can whistle to activate the, uh, the camera on the phone. Using your phone to take catch pictures like this is pretty easy. It just becomes a little bit more difficult when it's dark. For this, we like to use an LED light. A little panel of LEDs like this brightens up your shot just enough uh, to be able to take catch pictures in the dark. They're not going to be amazing, but perfectly suitable if you're just using a phone. As you'll already know, there's a huge difference in quality between a phone camera and an actual proper DSLR, for example. However, there's also a large difference in price, and we understand that if some of the cameras that we show now are out of your price range, that's understandable. However, if you really want to prioritize taking brilliant photos of your fish, you will want to look for a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Now we have used Canon, Sony and Nikon cameras and haven't really noticed a huge amount of difference between them. Of course there's different models with different pros and cons but what we'd want to say to you guys is actually what you need to think about the most is what lens you're using. The lens makes a massive difference to your catch pictures. So for smaller fish, we like to use something like a 24mm or a 35mm lens. That is on a camera with a full frame sensor. When you buy your camera, you'll just need to check whether it's full frame or crop sensor. A crop sensor camera only uses a small amount of its sensor, so it jumps in. It's like it's added an extra bit of zoom to the lens that you're using. So if you've got a crop sensor camera, I would advise going for a 24mm or a 35mm lens. If you have got a full frame camera, probably best to look at a 50mm uh, lens. The big difference with lenses is the focal distance can adjust how big or small your fish looks and it also can change how much the background gets defocused. So for an example, here's three photos of the same fish taken at 24mm, 50mm and 80mm. 
If I cycle through those photos, you'll see that the fish appears slightly larger in some of the pictures and slightly smaller in the others. Now, this information is quite valuable because if you're taking photos of relatively small fish, if you're catching roach, uh, bream, maybe perch and stuff like that, you probably want to shoot those photos on something like a 35mm lens. Reason being is that if you use an 80mm lens, you're going to end up making those fish look very small and they won't fill the frame of your image so much. People will prefer to use different lenses for different species of fish, different sizes of fish and different styles of photography and essentially you're going to have to make your own mind up as to what style satisfies you the most. But for an example, here are a few photos uh, on screen now with their focal length attached so you can get an idea of the sort of image that you'll get out of each type of lens. Now we're going to look at how to set up ready to take self takes with a professional camera. First of all ensure that your unhooking mat is in position, it's wetted down nicely and then take your tripod, connect your camera and set the camera round about head height, so head height whilst you're kneeling. Now you will need to set your aperture or f number. Imagine this is like the pupil in your eye. If your pupil is wide open, it lets more light in. And if you look at someone in a dark room, they've got a large pupil. However, if you close that aperture down, you close your pupil right down, then it lets less light in. And uh, that works better on you know, brighter days. What we need to look at when using aperture is how much is in focus within the image. Because if you shoot a low F number, F2, you're not gonna have much in focus. You're gonna have a small plane of focus and then the rest will be blurry, as you can see in this image. Then when you make your F number higher, the amount of focus increases and then higher again, the focus increases yet again. We like to shoot our catch pictures around about the F4 mark because we find around about F4, the fish is in focus and the person's face is reasonably sharp too. If you shoot too shallow, let's say you shoot down at 1.4, the fish is going to be crisp, but the person's face is probably going to be completely blurred out. If you shoot really high F number, F20, you'll likely see the dirt on your lens or on your sensor, but also you won't get that nice soft defocused background. Once you've chosen your aperture or F number to dictate how much is in focus, you'll then need to set your shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long the uh, sensor is exposed to light. If the shutter opens, stays open for a while and then closes, loads of light comes in, but it also means things might blur or move during that period. If your shutter just opens and closes very, very quickly, then your images will be crisp and sharp. As you can see here, if your shutter speed is over about a hundredth of a second, faster than a hundredth of a second, your images are gonna be pretty crisp. If your shutter speed strays down beneath that and goes quite slow, down at uh, 1 80th of a second or 50th of a second, you're then gonna start to encounter blur on objects that move slightly within your image. We suggest that you stick to 100 or 200 and above, really, if you're taking catch photos. This is because the fish will move a little bit, you will move a little bit, and the higher that shutter speed, the more likely it is that your image is nice and sharp. Finally, there's ISO. This is the sensitivity of the sensor inside the camera. This is basically deciding how bright or dark your image is going to be. You wanna have your ISO as low as you can get away with, because if your ISO is very high, your image is more likely to become noisy. What I mean by noisy is bitty and grainy and without much detail. You wanna try and keep your ISO reasonably low if you're able to. Now I like to take a bank stick, line it up with roughly the middle of my unhooking mat and just stick it in the ground. This enables me to then jump behind the camera, crop in on that bank stick and get the focus perfect. I like to set it on manual focus so that it's fixed. Uh, that just means that I know exactly where I need to hold the fish uh, once I've got it on the, on the bank. The camera we use is a Sony A7S and this camera enables us to set uh, a timer built in inside the camera. This timer means it will wait 
a certain number of seconds until it starts taking pictures and then we'll take pictures at intervals into the future. This is really helpful for self-take photography. If your camera doesn't have a built-in intervalometer, you will need to buy one. You can get one uh, online pretty cheap. That will just plug in your camera and you can use that to set uh, the time between photos. Once I've fired off a few practice photos of me just holding my hands up to make sure that I'm all within the shot and the exposure's all good, I'll then get the fish out the water. Pop it on the, on the unhooking mat, lean over, turn the screen round so I can see it and everything's good, press the shutter button and 10 seconds from then, uh, the camera will begin to take photos. Looking at my screen, I'm able to ensure that the tail of the fish isn't cut off, the head of the fish is nicely balanced in the shot, and I'm not too high or too low. I'm perfectly within the frame. I like to actually take the photos a little bit wider than I really want. This is because if you crop part of the image off, if you accidentally cut the tail off the fish, you can't bring it back. But if you're a little bit too small within the image, you can always crop in post to, uh, to get it exactly as you want. As you've seen, this process was pretty simple and I've managed to take a few photos of this fish. Now the process becomes a little bit more difficult when it's dark. In the dark you'll, you'll probably want to use an LED light uh, just to light up the, the area. And then if you want to create even sharper, crisper photos with a lower ISO and a faster shutter speed, you'll then want to use a uh, on-camera flash. Some cameras have got a flash built into them, you can just stick it on auto with the flash and it'll just get you a perfect night shot pretty much straight away uh, or you might want to buy uh, an external flash and attach it into the hot shoe on top of your camera. Either way we would definitely recommend using a flash at night if you want really crisp shots but an LED light is fine if you're not so fussy. Anyway hope this video helps you guys take better photos of your fish when you're on your own. Good luck with your fishing and hopefully you'll catch something soon that's worth photographing. Good luck and we'll see you in the next video.